welcome back uh, to our NPTEL course on uh, scanning electron ion probe microscopy in material characterization. Uh, in last few class we have been discussing on scanning ion microscopy. Uh, in that uh, topic uh, we were discussing of uh, different contrast mechanism. Uh, so, today we will continue with that and also we will move forward to uh, different imaging modes. Uh, in the last lecture we have discussed on the uh, topographic uh, contrast material contrast ion channeling contrast three different contrast we have discussed in our last lecture. As we have seen that topographic contra contrast is much significant uh, in helium ion microscope as compared to scanning electron microscope. It is because of higher uh, secondary yield uh, as a function of the tilt angle when uh, we go for uh, different tilt angle of the specimen in degree versus secondary electron yield. Then we have seen that for a helium ion microscope or ion microscope it goes like this. On the other hand for um, for a for a electron microscope it is goes like this. The secondary electron yield drastically increases for ion microscope this is for helium ion microscope this is for SCM because the yield of the secondary electron is higher with ion microscope at a particular tilt angle therefore, we have a better contrast in helium ion microscope. In the this is about topographic contrast mostly for three dimensional specimen we always have sample up and down and therefore, they have different tilt angle and at different tilt angle we have different uh, yield of secondary uh, we have different secondary electron yield. Second uh, contrast is the material composition contrast we have also seen that uh, materials with different atomic number produce uh, different numbers of secondary yield and therefore, one can distinguish uh, in one image whether uh, there are two different kind of materials is present. Similarly, ion channeling contrast which is almost similar as that of scanning electron microscope uh, when material is amorphous or crystalline depending upon the orientation the channeling contrast occurs. Uh, voltage contrast, magnetic contrast, optical contrast are all same similar type as that of scanning electron microscope. Therefore, I will not discuss uh, those, those we have covered in our scanning electron microscopy part. Uh, in the scanning electron microscopy part we say it is a cathode illuminations because our electron bombardment was occurring. But here in helium ion microscope we say it is ion illuminations because helium ions uh, incidence on the specimen surface. What additionally I will talk here is ion dependent contrast, ion dependent constant, uh, uh, contrast uh, is because we have different we can use different type of ions in ion microscopy all electrons are same but not all ions are same therefore we can change the ions and see what different contrast is obs uh, being observed and here is the study recent study on uh, a nitrogen ion microscopy and helium ion microscopy of same sample as you see in the left image here in the left side image uh, we have different type of uh, specimen different type of materials uh, uh, different type of materials that are viewed under microscope in a nitrogen ion microscope. So, for example, here it is gold and here is sorry gold in this place is a collapsed gold we have a gold we have a graphite we have a SiO 2 and we have also four layer graphene. If we carefully look this is a helium ion microscope image helium no, sorry it is a nitrogen ion microscope image not helium ion microscope the first two one are the nitrogen ion uh, microscopic image and second two one these are helium ion microscope image and they are taken at different uh, ion dots. Uh, we could see in the left most image this image there is a contrast difference of different type of sample gold graphite 
SiO2 and four layer graphene. For example, uh, here in the graphene and graphite appears more darker, graphene and graphite is appears more darker and it is more clear when dodge has been increased to an extent. Uh, you can see that uh, graphene plus in this place it is completely dark. Similarly, graphite is also completely dark. Gold contrast is not same as SiO2 contrast. So, all these like graphite and graphene have similar contrast on the other gold and SiO2 have a different contrast in a nitro nitrogen ion microscopy NIM. On the other hand, if we see in the helium ion microscopy case HIM, then we do not see a different contrast with graphene. You see almost graphene contrast, graphite and SiO2 are similar. Certainly, gold is different, gold have a different contrast. One can easily distinguish gold, this is also gold, this is a pattern sample, this is also gold. In, in indicating from their contrast, we can uh, differentiate there are two different materials like here is gold and here is something else. Similarly, with a little higher dodge, we can also see the uh, contrast difference. Here it is gold and here is similar, all similar. We, we can only distinguish between uh, two different type of contrast, one is for gold and another is for all other materials. But if we look at the nitrogen ion microscopy image, we have clear cut difference with uh, from the graphene and graphite. There is almost negligible or no secondary electron yield from this region graphite, uh, graphite and graphene no secondary electron yield. There is a suppression of secondary electron yields when we do with a nitrogen uh, ion microscopy, but in this cases it is not. So, this contrast difference uh, is, the, is the effect of ions. In case of iron, uh, we could able to see the difference, but not here. That means, different ions interact with the specimen different ways and therefore, providing different contrast mechanism, which is not possible with a scanning electron microscope or electron microscopy image. Uh, if we look at little bit uh, at a higher magnification, we zoom in and we can see here, uh, here uh, the helium ion microscope uh, uh, dodge is increased, here it was 10 to the 13, 7.7 .7, and it was 8.3. When the dodge was increased, now there is there, now we can see some contrast difference here from graphene and SiO2. Here is graphene, this is a zoom in uh, portion. Here we can see clear difference graphene, gold, gold, SiO2, all difference we can see. By increasing the ion dodge in helium ion microscope, we would able to difference to an extent about the presence of two different material graphene and gold graphene and SiO2 or graphite, graphite is not seen here because it is a magnified image, but otherwise uh, at a little lower dodge we were not able to distinguish. But moreover the contrast difference as you see here, uh, the contrast difference in this case is significantly different with different ions. This uh, indicates the importance of uh, the ion microscope by varying different ions. Moreover uh, helium being the small size smaller the size having higher resolution could able to distinguish the steps at this place which is not as clear in case of neon ion microscope because uh, not uh, the, the nitrogen ion microscope because nitrogen size is bigger therefore, resolution will be not as big as not as good as of helium. So, the topographic contrast here this is a topographic contrast is more significant uh, more significant in helium ion microscope as compared to the nitrogen ion microscope. Here is uh, the person, the same person, but at a lower, much lower magnification. Looking at the wider view, uh, this is the re, this is the region we were previously looking looking at it in the previous um, slides. But what we can see clearly here, this is the region we are looking at it by helium ion microscope. Here by nitrogen ion microscope. In the nitrogen ion microscope, the region we are look, looking previously, that region becomes completely different contrast. It is because those region have some interaction between the nitrogen ions and the specimen thereby 
change in their um, uh, uh, change in their uh, 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 so there is an interaction between the ions bombarding on the specimen uh, therefore the change in the um, structural features inside the material therefore the uh, signals coming out of it is different to the outside region here there is no difference in case of helium ion microscope uh, which we have seen this region before that almost similar contrast to outside region there is no changes uh, because there is, there is almost negligible interaction uh, between the helium and the specimen. On the other hand what we can see here again it is a isolated graphite, isolated graphite contrast for nitrogen ion, nitrogen ion is significantly different to the helium ion microscope. This portion is SiO2, SiO2 almost have similar contrast as that of graphite, isolated graphite, but here we can see that SiO2 contrast and graphite contrast is significantly different, same uh, is not observed with a helium ion microscope. So, this indicates that uh, by changing the ion in some cases we could see a drastic difference in the contrast or the ion induced secondary electron yield and thereby uh, helping us to distinguish uh, the presence of different specimen in the material. This is the effect of uh, ions on the contrast mechanism which is not possible in scanning electron microscope. Then if we go to imaging mode, uh, we have a couple of imaging modes such as let us say high resolution imaging mode. Uh, in case of high resolution imaging mode, we should always use uh, the secondary electrons uh, uh, that is SE1 uh, uh, because uh, S, uh, ion induced secondary electrons or ISI1 they mostly emerge from a smallest area of the specimen and therefore as they emerge from the smallest area because their interaction volume is also small because the higher mass of the ions as compared to the electrons and the signal or nothing but the secondary electrons generated because of the ions comes from a smallest area they give the best resolution in the scanning microscopic technique. Uh, certainly uh, if you we want high resolution imaging we, we can prefer to use higher primary energy that is smaller wavelength, smaller wavelength means we can use smaller spot size, smaller spot size means we can have a better resolution. Th third point is a low beam current, uh, low beam current is important because it provides enough signal uh, unless and until it provides enough signal to noise ratio. A low beam current uh, means there will be less surface damage first thing, there will be less surface damage and there will be less charging in case the sample is insulating in nature and thereby it can give the best resolution. But as, as per the storage the best result has, is obtained uh, with a beam current less than 0.2 pico ampere in, in, in a Zeiss Orion helium ion microscope. So, here uh, you see a, a large depth of field imaging. Uh, image with a large, of, large depth of field is an advantage with helium ion microscope. A large depth of field can be achieved if we can use or a small angle of aperture that is alpha can be uh, need to be very small. But if we go for helium ion microscope, um, if we go for scanning electron microscope, we cannot make uh, this alpha to be very small. If we make alpha to be very small, then there will be a significant increase in the diffraction aberration and that diffraction aberration will lead to uh, produce uh, no sharp image thereby the alpha value has to be an optimum. Alpha value cannot be made too small because diffraction aberration is inversely proportional to the angle of aperture. But on the other hand in case of helium ion microscope we have a liberty to use small angle aperture because in this case the alpha 
uh, the um, that means alpha can be made smaller because because lambda or wavelength of the ions is much smaller as the wavelength of the ions are much smaller diffraction is much less and th thereby we have uh, it can it can allow us to use a smaller angle aperture um, smaller angle of aperture that is alpha and with a smaller angle of aperture we can have large depth of field imaging as you see in this image uh, depth of field uh, is nothing but the range of position of the uh, of the object uh, at which uh, a focused image can be collected uh, as you see the bottom part of this region are well focused as that of the top part so for example sample sample have a feature something like that we can take a image with with both bottom part and top part are well focused if both are well focused so the range this range is called depth of field this is much larger in case of helium ion microscope edge compared to this scanning electron microscope and certainly much higher than optical microscope. So, this is another advantage uh, of helium ion microscope where we can uh, collect uh, images with a large depth, depth of field. Imaging the insulating sample, imaging the insulating sample is another important uh, requirement in the microscopic technique because as we have seen in case of scanning electron microscope charging occurs when electrons accumulate at the surface and this charging electrons will accumulate when the sample is insulating in nature because electrons cannot travel inside the specimen and cannot go up to the ground. So, therefore, electrons will be accumulated in the surface and that leads to distortion of, of, of the image uh, and the image we can see the uh, bright line dark line and also the image can shift some region will be very bright, some region will be dark, so, such kind of distortion occurs uh, when we take uh, the image for an insulating sample. But on the other hand, in case of helium ion microscope or ion microscope, this charging effect can be efficiently controlled. Here, uh, we can use a much smaller beam current, we can use a much smaller beam current you may ask then we can also use much smaller beam current in scanning electron microscope. Actually, if you use much smaller beam current in a scanning electron microscope, you will not get enough signal because uh, the yield of secondary electrons is much lower in a electron microscope as compared to the helium ion microscope. In case of ion microscope, let us say helium ion microscope, one ion bombarding on the specimen will produce uh, 3 to 8 number of secondary electrons. One ions will produce 3 to 8 secondary electrons. On the other hand, one electrons, one electron in scanning electron microscope will produce only 1 to 1 1.5 number of secondary electrons. So, the yield of secondary electrons is much higher in helium ion microscope. Therefore, we can use a smaller beam current and then, then we can get enough number of uh, secondary electrons or signal to create an image. Therefore, uh, in a helium ion microscope, microscope, we can use smaller beam current. When a smaller beam current is used, less number of such electrons uh, or ions to be traveled inside the specimen and that would not cause the uh, charging. Second thing, second possibility is the uh, use of backscattered helium ions for the imaging purpose. Instead of using secondary electrons, for the imaging purpose, we can use backscattered ions for the imaging purpose. And the backscattered ions have a quite large energy, quite high energy of around 10 keV. And that high energy will not be affected by the charging occurred on the surface of an insulating specimen. Uh, in the scanning electron microscope, we have also possibility to use backscattered electrons for the imaging purpose, but backscattered electrons have an energy greater than 50 electron volts much lower than the energy of the backscattered ions. As their energy is much lower than the uh, backscattered ions, they are affected by the voltage created because of charge accumulation. Therefore, uh, backscattered electron image also get influenced 
by the charging surface charging though edge though relatively less edge compared to the secondary electron image from the SEM. And the third way to image the insulating sample is to use an electron flood gun because when ions are positively charged when such charges are accumulated on the specimen then we can use the electron flood gun to neutralize the charge surface positive charge and that way we can uh, image the insulating sample. Here you see in the right side a uh, backscattered ion image of a pattern chromium on the quartz, quartz is this is the quartz SiO2 and this is what the chromium, chromium. First of all you, what you can notice here that there is a um, significant contrast difference between the chromium and SiO2. So, it is nothing but providing information about the specimen that certain region have one material, this region have one material and another region have another material because of this brightness difference. Here more number of backscattered ions comes out and they have a much higher energy as compared to here what is coming from SiO2. And th that also gives us information about uh, the atomic number of this specimen to an extent. If, uh, we, if we use uh, scanning electron microscope to image this kind of sample, it is almost impossible because SiO2 is highly insulating sample and it will completely, uh, it will uh, uh, um, a very strong charging will occur on the surface will not provide you a clear or uh, distinct image uh, of the specimen. On the other hand, what we see here a uh, very clear image of, uh, an, of an insulating sample using backscattered ions. We can also advantage of you, uh, doing biological sample using helium ion microscope. Normally, biological samples are studied by uh, three microscopic technique, one is fluorescence microscopic technique uh, and other is electron microscopic technique. Uh, in case of uh, um, fluorescence microscopic technique, we use uh, those are um, labeled, these, those biological sample are labeled and uh, when the imaging occur, we see the position where uh, those are labeled. Uh, the position which are labeled not the overall morphology of this specimen using the fluorescence microscopy. And when the biomaterial labeling is done with a biometric material that means it has uh, more number of uh, sample preparation uh, steps rather uh, it is not straightforward or direct. On the other hand uh, in case of uh, electron microscope, uh, in case of transmission electron microscope let us say the sample has to be cut to thin section so that uh, the electrons should uh, pass through this specimen and produce the image and it would give you a 2D image. It will give you 2D image uh, for the specimen and again the specimen preparation technique is not that straightforward or easy. We one can do scanning electron microscope, it can certainly give 3D image, but uh, most of the biological sample are insulating in nature. So, as they are insulating in nature, the, the, the sample must be must be coated with a uh, metal conducting metal to avoid charging to be done. So, as a metal coating is provided on the specimen of the biological sample, uh, it would uh, not provide the accurate uh, or precise surface uh, um, morphology uh, of the sample because uh, as you uh, we can see here, I have one example uh, what the difference between uh, when metal coating, coating is made or when metal coating is not made. So, here is a biological sample, it is a stem cell uh, sample prepared by uh, critical point dryer system. Uh, in the top one is coated with a gold, it is a stem cell and the, uh, in the middle there is a almost like a spherical uh, uh, structure, spherical structure that is a type of uh, uh, called uh, neurons type of things that is round and spherical from where we have like little many lamellar type of uh, structures are coming, this, this um, lamellar structures are arising. Uh, there is a filamentous type of uh, uh, structures coming out. Uh, this is a low magnification image and this is uh, top one is a SEM image. These are all SEM image, but 
but on, on the other hand these are the heliomyon microscopic image uh, which is not coated. These are HIM image, heliomyon microscopy image, this is SEM image, uh, this, this is coated with a gold metal uh, and if we look uh, at these two images certainly it appears here uh, that uh, more 3D features with the surface having more clarity compared to here. On the other hand, if we look at here, we, if we, you, you, we can see the, the uh, difference of the, uh, the surface of the cell. Uh, here it is appearing as a particle morphology, particle morphology on the other hand it is appearing here as a pores, pores here as you see these are pores type of structure. The correct morphology is this, not the this. Here these particles are nothing but the gold particle. When gold is coated, what we see actually not the surface of the cell membrane or cell, but rather the metal coating, coating provided on the specimen. This is what happened for uh, when a metal coating is done to a biological sample. On the other hand, we can see clear uh, surface image of the um, using the helium, helium ion microscope uh, without any distortion or any other uh, features. Oh, the correct features we are seeing in the helium ion microscope. This is the advantage of helium ion microscope for studying the biological sample. Therefore, can be more uh, uh, trusted. Another example here, uh, some biological sample. Uh, here is a um, uh, predator, uh, predator worms. Uh, the image uh, reveals the high depth of field. Uh, in the left side, as you see, it is a uh, high depth of field image. Uh, and in the B1, uh, it was uh, A1 is a native sample, B1 is a, uh, milling uh, by the neon ions revealing the primary tooth here. The surface, this portion is milled away by using the uh, neon ions and we can see inside its tooth. And again, the outer sheath was removed by again by milling by uh, neon ions and we could see the features and, we, uh, and then the D1 is the pattern line using a low fluence of neon ions how we can create a features or break or damage a particular region by using the ions uh, on this specimen. This is the advantage of helium ion microscope uh, as compared to this scanning electron microscope. So, in conclusion uh, what we have seen that uh, topographical contrast is maximum, topographical contrast is maximum with ions as compared to the electrons as the source. So, uh, the first important information uh, and ISI the ion induced secondary electrons from helium um, ion microscope even provide material and composition contrast which is not provided by the secondary electrons induced by the electron beam. Like backscattered electron, backscattered ion also give composition contrast as you we have seen just now the chromium and quartz difference contrast as the energy of the backscattered ions depend on the target material. So, the target material atomic number changes, the yield of the backscattered electrons, the energy of the backscattered electrons will also change. And helium ion microscope provide also different contrast such as voltage contrast, magnetic contrast as that found in the SCM. All type of different contrast we found uh, in SCM can also be uh, seen in the helium ion microscope. Uh, helium ion microscope provides higher surface resolution because, because of negligible contrib contribution of the SC2, SC2 which comes out uh, little away from the position where the incident beam uh, uh, strikes to the specimen. Charging effect can certainly be easily mitigated with helium ion microscope without a metal cutting on the specimen. For uh, scanning electron microscope, we do need to cut a metal layer, conducting layer to uh, avoid the charging, but here without uh, metal coating given we can do the uh, uh, imaging and see the clear surface. Helium ion microscope provides a much higher resolution, contrast and more detailed information in comparison to standard electron microscopic methods used in biology and medicine. So, all this information, all these points that you have seen here uh, where uh, helium ion microscope is much superior as compared to the scanning electron microscope. Uh, more details you can find from these books, uh, these are the references and thank you very much.